Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I have another LaunchBox tutorial for you. We're going to be focusing on PlayStation 1. Now in this video, we're not going to be using RetroArch. We're going to be using a standalone PlayStation 1 emulator called ESPX. One of the best around, if not the best, in my opinion. I've used it for years and I love it. Now before we get started here, you're going to need some ROMs and you're going to need a PlayStation 1 BIOS. I cannot and I will not leave links in the description, but if you do a quick Google search, you will find everything you need. Search for PlayStation 1 BIOS and PlayStation 1 ROMs or PlayStation 1 ISOs. Another great resource with a lot of information is EMU Paradise. So before we get started, there are a few different formats that we can choose from while running our PlayStation 1 games. Now the main one, I'm just going to go into my PlayStation 1 ROMs, is the old school bin NQ file. So I have Bloody Roar 2, and in order for it to run, we're going to need a bin file, which is the game itself, and a Q file. The Q file is pretty much a text document that contains file locations to tell the emulator where to play the music from in the game, uh, which bin file to choose. This is the old school, and it works very well. There is another format, PBP. Now these are my favorite because we have single discs. So we have Final Fantasy VII here that is only one disc. This is all of the discs put together into one file. Very easy to use. We don't have a bin in queue. All we have is a PBP. This is PSX to PlayStation Portable. PSX to PSP. So if you want to search for that on Google, you can come up with any game you want. Last thing you're going to need is the PlayStation BIOS. I am using SCPH1001.bin. We're going to go ahead and start LaunchBox. If you have an update, go ahead and update it now. From this menu here, we're going to go to Tools, Import, ROM files. Next, since I'm using BinNQ plus PBP files and they're in different file locations, I'm going to add a folder. You can add files if you'd like to. I'm just going to navigate to where my PlayStation 1 ROMs are. I have my BinNQ and my PBP in the same location if I can find it here. I'm just going to choose PS1 ROMs, the folder. It has two other folders in here, but it's going to scan each of these folders for me. Click OK. Next. Platform for imported ROMs. Drop down and we're going to find PlayStation 1. Sony PlayStation. Next. From here, we need to add an emulator. Click Add. We're going to go to the drop down menu and we're going to choose EPSXE. Right here, we can click to download this. So what this is going to do is open up the download location within Google and we're going to be able to download EPSXE. So click on this. It'll open up your web page. Click Downloads over in the left hand side here. And I'm on Windows. Obviously you're probably on Windows also. I hope so. There's only 32-bit but it works great. So EPSXE version 2.0.5 as of making this video, that's the newest version. It's going to download. Now we're going to go to that download location. Yours might be in downloads. I have mine set to download to a separate drive. Right click, extract. Now I recommend taking your EPSXE folder, this contains your emulator, and putting it somewhere that's easily accessible. I'm going to put mine in documents. I'm going to go into Documents here, and I'm just going to drop it in my Emulators folder. So now, if we launch this, it'll launch EPSXE. So we've put our PlayStation 1 emulator in our Documents folder, or wherever you want to put it, just as long as you know where it is. We're going to go ahead and close. We're going to finish setting this up. Emulator Application Path, Browse. Mine is in Documents, Emulators, EPSXE 205, scroll down till we find the application, double click, press OK. 
Next. Use the files in their current location. I'm going to use my ROMs exactly where they're sitting. Search for and download metadata from Wikipedia. Next. Now you can leave everything checked and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Click Next. It's going to parse EMU Movies, so if you don't have an account, it's going to ask you to sign in. Go ahead and make an account to EMU Movies if you don't have one. It's worth So it's found our ROMs here. I only have a few, but it found my PBP and my BenNQ files. Click Finish. Down here, it's going to search for all of our data, our images, and download them. Give it a little bit of time to download. When it's finished, over on the left-hand side, we'll see PlayStation 1. All right, my games are done importing. Click OK. Over here, click on PlayStation. Now, if we just scroll through, we have our games imported. If we click on one of these games, EPSXE is probably going to crash. We need to set that emulator up. We need to set it up with our controller and our BIOS. So go ahead and close LaunchBox. Now let's go ahead and grab our BIOS. Mine's right here. I'm just going to go ahead and copy or cut. I'll just copy mine. Now we're going to navigate to our EPSXE folder, Emulators, EPSXE. At the top, we have a folder named BIOS. Go ahead and paste your BIOS in here. Back up and we're gonna launch EPSXE. It's gonna launch with the configuration wizard. Click Config. Now it found our BIOS that we put in the BIOS folder. Make sure that's highlighted. Click Next. Now there's two different cores we can use. I always use Pete's OpenGL2 GPU core 2.0.0. Next. 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 We can set our controller up from here. Let's go ahead and do that. Controller one. So I'm using a Bluetooth controller and the best bet is to get an Xbox One controller with Bluetooth built in. It's the Xbox One S controller or a wired Xbox 360 controller. Now, the only reason I say that is if I click on my L2 button here and I try to press L2 on this Bluetooth controller, it won't show up. Something's up with the controller. I do not know what it is. So I'm going to skip my L2 and my R2 so I don't have to reconfigure a controller. Very self-explanatory. Click on what you want. Press it on your controller. Set your controller up. Now I'm sure there's probably a fix for this, but in this video, I'm just not going to look into it. There are tons of tutorials on EPSXE. Okay, now that you have your controller set up, click Next, Done. From here, I recommend going to Options, CPU Overclocking, and make sure it's set to 1. It will crash if it's set any higher, and for some reason, it's always set higher for me. Make sure it's on X1. Under Config, Video, there's tons of settings in here, but luckily at the bottom here, there are default settings. You can click nice or fast. I'm gonna click nice. I know my computer will handle it. If yours is a little laggy, click fast. Desktop resolution, 800 by 600. That's fine for now. You can experiment with all these settings. There's so much in here to mess with. I'm not even gonna go through it right now. Show FPS display on startup. I want to show you guys the FPS. That's the only reason this is checked. If you want to see it while you're playing a game, make sure it's checked. One last thing, make sure your full screen window mode is on. It'll go full screen when we launch a game. Click OK. We can now close EPSXE. We're going to restart LaunchBox. We're now ready to launch our PlayStation 1 games from within LaunchBox. My FPS is listed up at the top left hand corner. As you can see, you can stretch this screen out, but the original PlayStation was meant to be played at 4.3 aspect ratio. If you stretch it out, everything's going to look a little weird. 
And I'll just go through and play one round. There's V-Sync options, um, resolution options within the EPSXE emulator. So go ahead and experiment. Like I said, there's just so many settings to go over. There's other tutorials on YouTube. If you have the paid version of LaunchBox and you set up your controller correctly, you can press your two hotkeys and exit. If not, press escape on your keyboard. It will close the PlayStation emulator and bring us back here. I'm just going to launch one more game, Tekken 3. Now you can skip the BIOS intro, which will be the PlayStation logo like you just saw, if you want to. I always like to have it. it just brings back memories hearing that sound. So yeah, press escape on your keyboard or your two hotkeys if you have the paid version. So that's it for now, guys. I really appreciate you watching. It's very simple to set up as soon as you have everything correct within EPSXE. If you're having trouble launching games, go ahead and Google it because somebody has probably run into the same exact problem and has a fix for you. If you guys want to see anything else regarding LaunchBox, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.